Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's create scrolling text screens in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. All right, shout out goes to Durania TV for requesting this tutorial about how to make these kinds of scrolling text screens. So I'm gonna show you one way of doing it. You can obviously change the font, you can change the graphics, but the idea is how something appears and then how it moves up in the screen. We're going to be using motion graphics templates in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is a new feature in Premiere Pro. Older versions can't do this. The old titler had no animation, so you have to do this either in a new version of Premiere Pro or you could do this in After Effects. I'm going to be using the vector motion setting and I've got a whole tutorial on that to move the screen up. If you use motion position, it will cut the bottom of the screen off. So let me show you what I've created first. All right, so let's break this down. So obviously I have the video and I've got some audio tracks, including the little boop that comes up, but this is the motion graphics template that we're going to create. And I wanna show you that I've got each one of these different objects added, whether it's text or the heart or the thumbs up. And on top of that is the vector motion. And that's changing this position information so that every, every time something's added, the vector motion moves it up. The vector motion is an infinite frame. Motion position is not an infinite frame. Motion, vector motion allows me to keep going, keep going, keep going, and adding new things at the bottom. All right, so let's start this again. I'll take the, a clip of the young woman, drop it into the timeline, and We'll start here. So I'm going to go to my graphics workspace up at the top. And I'll grab the type and click in the middle and type, I miss my cat. Let me change the name of this timeline. Just so it's a little easier to get to. I just want to check the uh, typeface that I used, which is Source Sans Pro, that's it. All right, scale that out, change that duration, okay. So I'll change the font, Source Sans Pro. light. And let's just make that a little bit smaller. Okay. So I'll grab the arrow. There's the anchor point. This little guy is very important. We're going to scale this up and this is the, where that will scale from. If you hold the control key on Windows Command on Mac, you can snap it to the corner or you can turn on this snap graphics. I want the scale to occur from the bottom. This is very typical of an animation that happens on a mobile device. The scaling starts from the bottom of where the, the word is, and the same with an image. Okay, so I'll move to this point here and change the at a scale. So this is where it's going to be at 100%. I'll leave this uniform and hit scale. I'll move back a little bit, and if you want to be accurate, if I hold the shift key and hit the left arrow, that moves five frames previous. That way that all the animations are the, the same duration. I don't know if five will be too quick. And then I'll change this to zero. So now the scale does this. Boop. And maybe that is a little bit too quick. So I'm going to move five frames earlier. So now it's 10 frames between there and there. Let's watch this. Boop, there we go. So that seems accurate. Boop. 
So that's the first word. I miss my cat. Vector motion has not changed. Now we're going to put the picture of the cat and we want to move the screen up to accommodate that. Okay, so I'll, I'll make sure that I'm further down on my timeline because I don't want it to occur at the same time. Let me close up this, find the cat and drag that in. Now over here on the, on the right, I can drag that cat in on another layer. So now the cat is showing up. There's the anchor point. I'm going to put the anchor point in the bottom left. And I'm already going to scale this down. So it's going to be too big. Let's imagine that this is within the confines of that message. Okay. So that happens to be 41. So the scale is set to 41. So again, I'll move down a little further and I'll set a keyframe, move 10 frames to the left, and make that zero. So now let's watch this. Here's the text. Text comes up. Oh, that's a little bit early. So let me move that down a little more. I miss my cat. Boom, there's that picture. But what makes this really look good is if the screen moves up. So let's go up to vector motion. I'll set a position keyframe just before this. And now I'll move to where this is where the cat will begin to scale. And I'm just going to drag this up. So now we've got, I miss my cat and the, oh, I think I should actually have the beginning of this at the end of that. Let me try that. Oh, no. <laughs> Let me zoom in. All right, so the scale is going to be the same. So the scale is here. Scale starts for both the position and position. So now when this plays, whoop, so there we go. So the image of the cat comes in and it moves up. Maybe it's a little bit, yeah. I'll bring that in that way. So now that scales in. All right, close that up. And we add a new text layer. So we're not going to mess with the text layer that we've already got. We'll grab another text layer. She's so, what did I write? Fluffy. So again, I'll go past, I always go past to where the scale is at 100%, then go, whoops, then go back 10 frames, scale that down. So now we've got new text. And again, we'll go back up to our vector motion. And again, I want to add another one of these keyframes. So right now, if I add, I'll show you what happens. If I make this go up now, it's going to start going up all the way from that keyframe. So it keeps going up. We want it to stop at this keyframe, wait until she types something, and then move ahead. So we want these two keyframes to be the same. So I'll copy and paste that. So now, it's not going to move between those. So it moves up, moves up. Right, it's a little bit fast, but I think you get the idea. So we're there, miss my cat, boom, so fluffy. Okay, now in my other version, you'll notice that it was on a bit of an angle. And that's done with the basic 3D with a swivel setting of minus 53 degrees. So if we select this motion graphics template, go to effects and look for basic 3D 
Make sure that's in the bottom. Let's do that minus 53. And now it's coming up. Boom. And now it seems a little bit too close. So we'll change the distance on the camera. It comes up, moves up, moves up. And again, all I did with, with this one was I just kept adding more things. And then I added these shapes in here, which were copied and pasted in from different graphics. Um, I have a, a whole tutorial on working with these graphics. So if we wanted to add a heart to this and not make another, we don't want another motion graphics template. So I'll, I'll go back to my motion graphics templates. I'll show you where to get these in a minute. Oh, there's my heart. So I want to show you how we can reuse uh, segments. So let me zoom out. Actually, you don't need to zoom out. All right, let's go back to browse. I'll drag the hearts counter in. I'll select it. And the only thing I want is the heart. So I'll copy that. Go back to, I miss my cat. Let me turn off that one. And if I paste this in, you'll see there's my heart shape. And for this particular one, I need to drag it above the 3D. It's got a whole bunch of keyframes already, which I, I, I don't want and opacity settings. So I need to get rid of these opacity settings. Okay, there's my heart right there. And the scale, we'll get rid of that. And I'll just use these position settings. It's easier to do it here when it's got an effect like that. All right, so again, I'll go to where the scale is at the desired amount, which is 69% at this point. And then I'll move back a little bit and then take that to zero. Boop, boop, oh, a little faster. And then again, we'll go all the way back up to vector motion and set a position keyframe. move a little further and move that up so the heart comes in, boop, like that. And of course, this is the one that I tweaked that's a little bit better. You can see it's like a couple of people are adding hearts and, and likes at the bottom of that. So I'm rushing through this because I have a complete playlist on how to make your own Mogerts uh, that is very detailed in, in how to create these. But this is taking those techniques and then creating these uh, text screens. The text that I'm doing right here doesn't have a, a, a box behind it, but I could have easily drawn a rectangle behind it and I could have uh, changed the opacity. But it's a pretty easy technique. And, and the real thing that sells this is that vector motion setting that is an infinite frame to enlarge this as far as you want it to go. All right, so there you go. If you're new to Video Revealed and you have found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that through PayPal, a one-time or monthly donation. There's a link in the description of this clip and on the front of the channel. Thank you so much to our wonderful PayPal supporters. We really do appreciate it. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.